Hello, my name is Anna, and I secretly wish I lived in Game of Thrones, even though I'd probably die within the first year. Welcome to What the Hey! <laughs> as much as I would love to make this a 20 minute video discussing the jousting scene in Game of Thrones, you know the one, this is going to be more realistic. Dragons will have to wait for another day. I know, I know, you're probably thinking to yourself, Anna, what does this have to do with Ag? Well, my poor confused friend, if there's one thing everybody knows about jousting, it's that it involves horses. I mean, without it, it would just be two knights running at one another with sticks, and that wouldn't make for a very captivating Game of Thrones episode. Jousting is a sport where two mounted, keyword mounted, knights run at each other with various weapons. I know when you hear the word martial, you think of Jackie Chan knocking out two ninjas with a split kick, but actually a martial sport is just a sport that involves combat. Throughout history, jousting has used various kinds of weapons, including axes, swords, daggers, and lances. Modern jousting is taken to just using lances. That's right, you heard me. I said modern jousting. We'll get to that in a bit. Jousting is part of what's known as hastiludes, which was a generic term for martial sports back in the Middle Ages. Jousting wasn't always just a sport. It started out as just being a way that knights would train in the cavalry. 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 Can anybody pronounce that word right? I don't know. Tell me how to pronounce that word. If you know how to pronounce the word. It'd be very helpful. Feudalism required landowners to give their kings knights in battle. Jousting would help prepare the knights for combat. Think of that scene in Game of Thrones from season 6. You'd want to be prepared for that too. Eventually, jousting became a form of entertainment. The first known record of a jousting tournament was in 1066. That's almost a thousand years ago. 951 to be exact. Eventually, the tournaments grew enough popularity to get their own official rules and regulations. Not long after, they became highly formal events. Nobles needed months to prepare. They needed permits, they had to challenge other landowners and give them time to find their own champions and they had to prepare feasts. Tourneys were a big deal. Some jousters weren't committed to a landowner, aka a liege, and event goers would be able to bid on them. These jousters were known as freelancers. It's a great pun, freelancers. Because <laughs> they have a lance in there. Yeah, okay. Knights who were good at jousting became well known throughout kingdoms. Like sports announcers and Tumblr fanfiction, Songs and poems about the knight's victories would be spread around, only increasing their fame. Winners also received many riches such as titles, land, money, and wives. Some champions even had rivals with other champions, much like sports stars. Now that I think about it, jousting is a lot like football, but with horses and sharp objects instead of balls. By the 14th century, even noblemen were getting in on the action. Both King Henry VIII and King Henry II of France can credit their deaths to jousting injuries. King Henry VIII received an injury that affected him for the rest of his life, and King Henry II of France literally died from the jousting tournament. Jousting was dangerous, but even people in the Middle Ages invented things to help keep jousters safe. They weren't savages! The list is the divider that separated the opponents. Before the list, knights would collide head-on, which really wasn't fun for anyone. At first, the list was made of cloth. Eventually, they started making it out of wood and titled it the tilt. Believe it or not, knights didn't always wear armor. They wore thick leather and chainmail, if anything at all. In the 16th century, knights started wearing armor instead. Armor was only used for entertainment since it had very limited mobility. It could weigh up to 100 pounds. That is what modern day armor is modeled after. As guns were invented, jousting became less combative and more for fun. And eventually, by the 17th century, jousting tournaments kind of died out. Some traces of it still existed, but nothing like it was before. The modern jousting tournaments that exist now are solely for entertainment purposes. And that, my friends, was a brief history on jousting. Please like this video if you want to learn more about jousting, and subscribe to join my online modern jousting troupe. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, well, I'm sure you know what to do by now. Bye!